Hello, welcome to Energy 142, class number 8. This is going to be the class on Adjusted Baseline, part 2. So, remember, we have been talking about Adjusted Baseline for several classes now, but we're still just at which model to use. So this can be a pretty complicated step. Uh, we'll be finishing that up today, and then uh, next, next class we'll really be going over when um, the rest of the steps. So let's look at where we're at with, with, with choosing which model to use. Last class we went over um, some asides with calculating heated degree days and cooling degree days um, with the balance point temperature. So now that we've discussed that, we can talk about some of the more complicated models, which are the three parameter model, the four parameter model, and the other models. So let's start with the three parameter models. So the three parameter models What's really nice about them is they're appropriate for a wide range of building types, including residential homes and small commercial buildings. And so this is what I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you to use the three-parameter model for uh, your semester-long project because, you know, schools are small commercial buildings. So they take the form the energy use equals a constant C plus a constant B1 times the degree days. But the degree days are calculated at a balance point temperature. That's, that's what B, BT is. Okay, so this is what we went over last class, but you went over how to calculate degree days at a certain balance point temperature. So let's look at sort of what they look at like graphically. And I and the book is sort of weird here, or the reading I, I handed out is a little weird here. Um, so I, I, I um, made some, you know, squiggly lines over what you don't really need to look at. So if we look at these models, what's going on is one of these is for heating and one of these is for cooling. So ambient temperature is the x-axis and energy use is the y-axis. So let's first look at the left graph. So what this is saying is as ambient temperature increases, the energy uses decreases. And then at a certain ambient temperature, it flattens out. On the right graph, the ambient temperature is flat in the beginning, or the energy use is flat at low ambient temperatures, and then as the temperature increases, the energy use increases. So what we know here is that the left graph is for heating, so the left graph is for heating, and the right graph is for cooling. So we need separate models for heating and cooling, because it wouldn't make sense if uh, one of these, if both of these can't describe what's going on with heating and cooling. So let's look at a little example. So there's the form just repeated. And so here is what we ended up with um, as our uh, best fit line for this graph. And you can sort of see it's a little bit different format, but Y is the energy use, because this is natural gas used in CCF. And X is the heating degree days. And this was calculated at a certain balance point temperature, in this case 55 you can see here. And, and we have our B1 is this 4.8216, and our C is the 95.72. It's a decent fit. It's a 0.9205 R squared value. Okay, so let's go to a little example. Let's say this is our base year. So this is our, this is our adjusted baseline model for our base year. If a future month had 500 heating degree days, how many CCS would you expect for the building to use? So what this is saying is, this is our model, x in this case is 500, we want to calculate what y would be. So if we do that, x is 500, we take our 4.82 and our 95.72, we had 2,505.72 CCF of the natural gas, so that's our adjusted baseline. If the building actually used 2,800 CCF during that month, what is the CCF savings, and is it performing more efficiently or less efficiently? So what we're saying is, okay, this is our adjusted baseline, but what we actually used was 2,800. So you want to think about it like this. Adjusted baseline is what you would have used had the building been operating exactly the same from year to year, taking into account weather differences. So what it did use is 2,800. So when we calculate the savings, we actually get a negative savings. So what that is telling us is that the building used more than it should have during that period, and it performed less efficiently than the base year. Okay, so that's what that's saying. 
So now we want to introduce a new, a new, another concept, hopefully one that you've seen before, called percent change. So percent change is just the new value minus the old value over the absolute value of the old value times 100%. And in your task, you're going to calculate the percent change um, for year two. Um, so I just gave you a little example here that new value would be the sum of the usage for year two, and old value is the sum of the adjusted baseline for year two. So let's look at this percent change, though, for our little example. So I just rewrote um, the two calculations we made. In this case, the um, if we remember, in this case, the new value is 2,800, and the old value is 2,505.72. Okay? So that ends up with a percent change of 10.5%. So what that means is that the percent change is positive, means the building used more energy than it should have, and we, and we already um, knew that. But now we can say it used 10% more. So you hear, you, you'll hear this with statistics a lot. It used 10% more, or our profits were 10% more, or things like that. So that's where they're getting that. It's percent change. And it's sort of a better way to think about it, um, because you can think of it as percentages. Okay, so now we sort of did some examples with the three-parameter model. Let's just look at a four-parameter um, change point model. So I'm not going to go over sort of the intricacies of this, but the idea is that there is, um, you have a lot of high refrigeration loads here, and or you have variable air volume systems, which you'll learn about more in the HVAC classes. But let's look at the graphs, because it's a little easier to understand than all this uh, math sort of mumbo-jumbo. So what happens is, instead of... Um, like we have with a three-parameter model, where we had a slope and then, uh, you know, a flat line um, of energy usage. Here we have two slopes. And again, we can try to figure out which one's for heating and which one's for cooling. As ambient temperature goes up, if we're going down in energy usage, that's going to be for heating. And if energy usage goes up as ambient temperature goes up, that's going to be for cooling. So again, the left is heating and the right is cooling. So I didn't want to get too much into five parameter models and multivariate models in this class. Um, these models are a bit more complicated and unfortunately we don't really have time to cover them in this class. One thing I will say about multivariate models is if you're looking at a school, a multivariate model can take into account whether the school is occupied or unoccupied during that time period. So, for example, this is one reason why I don't have you do um, your air conditioning um, or your any of your electricity bills for adjusted baseline because it the model, the three-parameter model, can't take into account whether the school is occupied and unoccupied, and that really affects the air conditioning use over the summer, which would really affect your electricity bills. So that's all we're really going to be covering in, in Class 8. Class 8 is a little uh, break to give you a little time to uh, work on task the adjusted baseline task.